Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the official podcast of the Fireside Tattoo Network. I'm Jake. This is Euless. We both feel like ass. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are struggling. <laughs> but we said we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Uh, I was like that all day today. I feel bad for you. You've been on the show before, so I don't feel quite as quite as bad for people who've never been on. I was like, man, normally I'm a little more engaging than this, and uh, I, have ba- I have faster responses. But today... It's not getting from here to here. Dude, it's just one of those things that when you get used to going out after conventions, you know, that you get used to saying shit, like, I'm going to do this shit. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, I ain't doing none of that shit yeah. that I said I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. That so I know. Tough. So I was like, when I walked by, I was like, oh, that poor son of a bitch <laughs> yeah. is over there talking so to people. Oh, God. I was like, I just got a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to not throw up on whoever I'm <laughs> <Right>. tattooing. <laughs> doing my best to talk to people and taking as long as i can to, to pull footage off of the sd cards like it takes like two minutes to do and people are coming up and they're like are you ready yet i'm like eh, just a couple more minutes i'm still pulling this footage over just staring at a blank screen i know You're like it would really help if you just slowed down for a second hold on yeah and it's done exactly <laughs> exactly that's what i have to do yeah um so i'd asked um i'd asked you to come back on uh and uh i, I, I feel i would love to have Eva back on too, but we we had talked about this um, uh, last night, or, or no, I guess maybe early yesterday or day before that you were doing a seminar here, and was this your first seminar? Yeah, I did my first seminar. Uh, so it was crazy because it was all day long. Yeah, I think that if you're going to do a seminar where you learn stuff, that I think you should finish your process, and also I'm slightly illiterate. So, like, the talking part for me is the hard part. Uh And without showing things, it's really hard for me to talk through it. Right, right. You know what I mean? I'm like, I I stumble over words. I don't, like, what's a good way to say it? I don't articulate. Articulate. Yeah. See, look at there. Yeah, yeah. Sneaking out. (laughs) Yep. Uh, So, explain kind of the flow of the workshop. Because you guys met early in the morning. I saw you with a group of people, like, at the front desk, and you you had a, a room someplace. And yep. then at the end of the day, I come by, and you're tattooing, and I thought the workshop was long gone, and I just stuck my head in and was like, hey, how was the workshop? And you're like, oh, still going. All these people are okay, around here. Okay, so here's the thing. Yeah, <laughs> just the, the way things go with, like, planning and things. And uh, the room that we were going to use, uh, the hotel people were like, oh, actually, we're going to sell food out of that room because the first year we made the most money selling food out of there. Mm-hmm. And they were like, you guys can't have it. Oh, okay. And I was like, well, fuck me. Yeah. I've got all this money from these people. Yeah. And I've been planning this for two months. So, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. I I'm like, tight <laughs> squeeze, man. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> uh, so I was like, we'll take anything we can get. And we took a room, and they didn't tell us that there was a cutoff time for the room. They asked how uh, long it would go. And I was like, probably from 10 to around 4. Yeah. And, uh, it, it went further than that, obviously. So that part was kind of a mess up. I think it would have actually been done around from like 10 to 5, 10 to 5.30. But since I had to break down and move everybody down here and set back up and then start the tattoo all over gotcha. again, it like pushed it into the late evening. Okay, so you were tattooing in that room. I was, yeah, until they Got until you. they booted us out. Got you. So the, what was the um, – what was the subject matter of the... So I was pretty much... I think it's funny, like, whenever you do a seminar, uh, people are just reminding you of what you know already. Yeah. Like, as an artist, everybody knows the shit that you're supposed to do. You just stop doing it for some reason. And you're like, well, that didn't work. But instead of doing the little stuff to fix it, you're just like, well, I'm just going to keep doing this shit until it works. And right. it never does. It never you know? works. So it was pretty much just a, a, a reel-it-in seminar. Reel-it-in. Uh, Find a subject matter or a, you know, a certain image or something that you want to do. Start with an anchor point and then grow slowly off of the same thing. So you have like a good anchor point and then you can, you can, I don't know, build off of something if you have a stable yeah environment to work from you know if you're just like i'm going to try this machine but i don't really know how this machine works or if you're not like capable of using a coil machine Mm -hmm. and you think that it's the coil machine's fault and you use a rotary you're not really learning anything you're just flip-flopping back and forth right because you think that there's some better way out there 
So so it's a lot about give, finding out what's what works and then kind of changing one variable at a time. At huh? a time, yeah. You know, it's like a science experiment. You've got a control group that oh. never changes, and then you have an experimental group that you change one thing, and you can go through hundreds of things, but you have a steady, like, I know this fucking works. Yeah. But maybe what if I try it this way this time? And then you're like, oh, that didn't fucking work. Right. But uh, the most of it was to the uh, preparation for tattooing. So uh, it's more. It started from a from a drawing. Base. Yeah. So it started. So this is what it started out as. Prep for your tattoo. So, drawing shapes of the body, drawing thumbnails, mm -hmm. drawing things before you start looking at your reference. So, like you know, you want to do a skull and a rose on someone's upper arm, trace the shape of the body out in the thumbnail. Thumbnail, you know, it doesn't even have to be detailed, just big block shapes of where everything's right. gonna lay out, like angles and positions. And then, if you're having a hard time, find your reference to look at that matches what's in your mind instead of just being at the whim of whatever they find on the internet, you know, because everybody goes through it where you start looking for images first and you have something in your mind. As soon as someone tells you what they want to get, it's like, boom, okay, yeah. this weird thing's popped into my head. And then when you start looking for references, it just completely goes away because you something. find something that you like. Yeah. Instead yeah. of you doing you and then right. finding the things to do to you. reinforce that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I find that, I, f I think that's, I think that's dead on. You'll, you'll find yourself, you know, you, like you said, you you know basically what the shape of a skull is. It's kind of a sphere, and yeah. you know what a you know what a flower looks like. So you can kind of just play with those abstract shapes at first, and then find things that help support your idea. Where a lot of times, what you'll do, and I and I'm guilty of it too. I'll, I'm flipping through looking for reference, and I find a great photo of a rose that has like a a bead of water on one of the leaves. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I want to do that, but suddenly that makes that a focal point of the tattoo and it was never supposed to be yeah. like I, there was nothing about a bead of water in this <laughs> tattoo and now i'm like now that's a big part of this tattoo yeah now that's what i'm after because i yeah. saw that right. and if it's like what did they say like you never go shopping without a grocery list yeah like because if you go you'll buy every motherfucking thing in the store yeah yeah and if you it's the same for tattooing you know if you start out with that idea and you don't have it mapped out then when you see that cool thing that you're like, fuck it, that's rad. It changes everything, and you just throw your idea out the fucking window. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like everything else. Usually your first indicate, like your first instinct, instinct on it is yeah. the right one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I like I, this. I, I, I love that you brought up thumbnailing. I don't think people do it enough. And we've done, uh, we did a little technique episode on it, and we've got some thumb low, uh, thumbnail templates that we, uh, <laughs> on our website, people can can take just of different body parts. Mm -hmm. And, um I, I, encur I always encourage everyone to, to use those because the way I think of it is you can really trick out a tattoo and make it look fantastic. I, if if it doesn't look good for me to Scott, I'm not going to get close enough to know that it looks fantastic. Oh, yeah, I'm and never going to get anywhere near it. I'm just yeah. going to walk right past your ass. Yeah, I mean, they can have tons. I mean, the, the bead of water could be dead on on that pedal. <laughs> but if the big shapes like don't make any sense or if, they're, if the darks and lights don't make any sense, if it's not balanced, I'm not getting close enough to look at 100%. it. 100%. Yeah. You know, it's like – Thumbnailing things is the equi th thumbnailing things to a body shape is the equivalent of drawing it on that person, yeah. and you you get to step back, you get to get up close without fucking doing anything. Yeah, it's like the perfect way to do multiple ideas too. You know, you get to thumbnail something, and you can completely render you know a thumbnail image that's this big. Mm -hmm. And if you fuck something up, your whole day isn't ruined. Right. But when you start drawing a sleeve out or you start drawing a half sleeve and you just start drawing, when you're like, man, that orbital on that skull is a little weird. I'm going to straighten it out. And then you do. And then the rest of it's off. And then you have a meltdown yeah. because you've spent all day yeah. drawing and you don't want to do it. And you're just like, fine, I'll put it. I'll do it in the morning yeah. instead of starting off with that structure and skeleton to keep you going. Yeah. And yeah. minor changes don't what slow not really slow you down but don't mm, what this is another thing i'm talking about they don't partially it's the 5 a.m that does it yeah it, I, know. It, it, uh, I keep that's keeping our brains from i from keep burping up like that was the worst part about today i keep oh. tattooing and i'd like burp 
and I'd like try to turn, but I knew <laughs> I knew what it smelled like. Oh. And I was tattooing that lady's neck, you know, so it was even like, I was like, I'm sorry, I, I took a shower this morning, but I know I smell like a liquor bottle. Oh, God. That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, I think I think the the biggest point with that in, in, in the thumbnailing is if you solve all of your big problems, which are like the major shapes and values on the front end, then it makes it harder to make mistakes as you go. But if, if those things aren't right, you can't fix it with icing, with making other stuff no, fancy. No, you can't. And once you're four hours in on it, you're just like... <laughs> I don't care. I'll do it in the morning, yeah. and I'll do it in the morning is what everybody says, yeah. and it's literally like the death of a tattooer's uh, like, like yeah. your creative ability for that particular piece yeah. for that day. I'll do it in the morning because you know what? You're not gonna fucking do it in the morning, no. and if you do it in the morning, it's not gonna be. Good. You're just gonna do it as fast as humanly possible. Right. Right. I'll work it out on the skin. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you couldn't do it on this piece of paper. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so do you think, what did you learn from it? What, what was the feedback from the group and what do you think you got out of it? I think that anytime that you are telling people what you think is proper and right, that you're actually teaching yourself yeah. because you're telling yourself again. Yeah. You'd be like, you know, those times when you're sitting alone and you're like, you know what? I'm just going to draw this. I'm not going to thumbnail anything. And then you're like, oh, okay, well, I'm a fucking idiot, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it it reinforces what you know. So you're you're growing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when you verbally say things out loud or show somebody something, and you have to communicate what you're doing and why, it makes you learn things. Yeah. That you yeah. don't know. You know them, but subconsciously you're doing them. Yeah. And and verify that you're actually right. When you say something out loud, when you you have to understand something well to teach it. And I notice when we're just answering questions for you know for our viewers whenever i have to like when i get in front of a camera to like do a viewer mm -hmm. question episode or something i'll start to say something out loud and then i'll go like is that true <laughs> like is that right i mean because you have to when you start saying it out loud you realize sometimes like and i'm just going on my own kind of preconceived idea but now that i say it out loud that may not be true at all yeah 100 you know? percent. and that's yeah. the thing that when i started the seminar off i started i was just like everything that i'm saying is kind of bullshit <laughs> yeah i was like it's it's not fact. There's no such thing as fact because there's people that can do anything without anything, and there's people that can't do anything without anything. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And I was like, everything that I'm saying is what I've found that works for me, and the majority of people that you see succeeding are doing this, but that's literally the only concrete fact that I can give you yep. as, like, I'd be like, I'm gonna spill my, I'm gonna spew all my bullshit at you, and if you think that it's correct, then awesome. But if you don't, also awesome. Yeah, I, don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it then. Uh, yeah. You know, oh. No, that, that, I was gonna say to that point. Um, I listen to audiobooks all the time, and used to Me I too. got so stressed because I thought I had to like remember everything or try to implement something or I was wasting my time and what I found now is you just grab nuggets from everything like I don't know where I learned anything from it just came from I listened I take in stuff constantly and I grab little pieces that work yeah and that's really the only that's the same as it's the same as doing a, a certain tattoo a certain way and changing one thing at a time right. you can only manage one fucking thing at a time. Yeah. And you can't listen to a whole audio book, which I'm obsessed with audio books because yeah. I drive and travel so much. Right. Um, uh, you can't save all that information at once. But if it gets relayed to you or somebody brings something up, your mind's remembering it even if it's not in the forefront of your mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's the same. Like a little bit at a time. And that's all that you really need to do. Yeah. Manageable jumps. Right, right. What um, what did you find? So I assume that, that the, the folks that were taking the class were asking questions during the tattoo process. What, were they? Yeah, uh, I mean, so some, there, I was really. Just kind of talking through. Asking uh, right. for people to ask more questions. There was a bunch of good questions. Okay. I'm just curious if they, um, I, I've just found as we try to teach drawing the questions all revolve around technical stuff uh and i just wondered if you found the same thing yeah kind of yeah. they uh they want to know the exact people want to know the exact way to do something mm -hmm. but there's not one right there is things that you shouldn't do obviously 
that won't make your stuff look good, but there's not really a, I can't tell you, you know, like when I sketch, I only go back and forth on the image or I yeah. do this or that. There's not, there's not a, yeah. Just like, just like tattooing. Right. There, there's only really one tattooing rule is to use black. <laughs> that is a rule. That's sure. a fucking rule. Yeah. And then everything else is kind of like, you, there's no real way to say that there's a hundred percent anything. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a, a sort of an art form, I guess. Yeah, and you know what? The the funny thing is, is I used to think there were a lot more rules until everyone started breaking them online, and I got to see all the things that I thought were uh, like hard lines on the sand. I was like, oh, well, I guess that's not true. <laughs> like, yeah. it was just true in the '90s. Whenever I was <laughs> started doing this, it was exactly it, me too. There, I, there was shit that people said that you would never do. Yeah, and you know, some of those things were right. They might not show up ev they might not be evident in the beginning yeah. but there's also no real way to disprove anything because everybody says like what's the tattoo going to look like in 10 years right and i think that you could do a tattoo that's completely surrounded by black and it still look like shit in 10 years yeah and you could do a tattoo that didn't have a lot of black in it and it still looked like ten shit in 10 years it really just comes down to how well you do it yeah. and yeah and uh sorry i got it was like ha only yeah. one thing at a time <laughs> yeah. it really comes down to how well you do it and if it's structured properly right and if it's not structured good it's not gonna last and if it's not structured good and there's a fucking ass load of black in it mm -hmm. doesn't matter yeah. It's just going to be an unstructured blob. Yeah, yeah. So w with your work in, in particular, um, you know, you're you're doing a lot of the similar subject matter, birds, flowers, very stylized, flowers that that really are specific to the way that you draw. You mm -hmm. definitely have your own kind of thumbprint, your own mark making when it comes to when it comes to those things. So when walk walk us through just a little bit the process of of designing. If you're doing it right, you're you're thumbnailing, and you just kind of have an idea of what of the of the shapes of the way that you like to lay flowers out and you're you're not starting with any reference at all you're just starting with the general shape no so. okay so that before i start into the no reference at all thing okay uh that is from years of using reference right that's not because i'm just like oh yeah you know um i think that people when you're learning stuff like well I'll, that's a little bit too much but uh I like to heavy reference thing things for new imagery. Okay. I think that if you're not familiar with something, that you're shooting yourself in the foot. But as far as the thumbnails go now, uh, yeah, I just, I know what a bird looks like. It looks like a drumstick. That's really like the funny thing about it. It looks like a yeah. chicken leg. Right. And uh, I just draw circles and squares around everything. Yeah. Uh, I think that a lot of people don't use the shape of the body properly. Yeah. Uh, they put images that should be the whole arm that are in the center of the arm, and then they use all this little detail stuff throughout yeah. instead of just making big, clean yeah. images yeah. that you're like, I know what the fuck that is. Yeah. And they don't have to make sense, you know, per se, but if it's – if you use all the reference to structure how you're going, it will make it sense. It will make sense. Yeah. You know, like no flower breaks apart like those roses that I do, mm -hmm. but they all keep the same direction and fall the right way. So, so it looks believable. Yeah. It's yeah. like I know that that shit's not real, but it's also attractive looking. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, uh, I'm glad you mentioned something about um, big, simple shapes. That's one thing that does stand out. Uh if if you were to, you know, a lot of your petals and your roses are big, open, you know, mm -hmm. simple shapes. And if you had a lot more folds and things in the petals and that bird sitting in the foreground, then the, the flower is constantly jumping up and competing with the bird. Yeah. It looks like trash. In the in the, uh, in the the seminar, that was one of the things, uh, reeling a lot of stuff back. Uh, it is the one constant that I've found through all styles of tattooing yeah. that is... Like, it's always there. When you see a 
really good tattoo. The whole tattoo is not in focus. Yep. The whole tattoo is not competing for your focal point. Like black and gray realism. If you're going to do a portrait with a bunch of crazy shit around it, if the portrait is hyper-realistic focused like on the face yep. and it kind of falls away as it goes out and unfocuses as it goes out, yeah. it's phenomenal yep. because your eye can only look at one spot at a time. Yeah. You know, even when you're looking somebody dead in the eyes, their eyes are literally the only thing you can see. Yeah. You're only focusing on one thing. So if you have a whole arm of focus to everything, your eye's just going to bounce all over the place. Yeah. And the same with if you have a highly detailed image in traditional or neo-traditional stuff. Uh, if you have a really highly detailed area, everything around it, should it shouldn't be just loose and open and nothing, but it should be less interesting right than the focal, focal image point. yeah because yeah. you're that's what the image is everything else is just fun yeah or yeah. movement right you know and, and some tricks to make that work or to to decrease the amount of contrast in those other areas so use your strongest contrast in the focal point sharper mm -hmm. edges harder edges in the focal point softer edges as yeah. you go out uh, interior and well varying line weights in yeah. your focal points yeah. uh more I, I don't really know the word. That's the funny thing. I think more like curvature and animation in your focal point yeah. compared to your mid-ground or your background yeah. helps a lot. So, like, if you're going to do a skull in a rose, I want to render some of the shapes under the that's under the skull to make it look a little more uh, – see what I'm saying? I can't use words. And I drank, <laughs> I drank a bottle of Mad Dog 2020 last night for oh some reason. Oh, God. Oh. Um, which I'm still tasting. Oh, uh, man. I like to render things out so they have dimension. Yeah. Uh, just to push it away even further from the roses and the background stuff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so what, after doing the first seminar, getting, I guess you got some feedback, or even if you didn't get feedback specifically, you kind of saw what people, how people took it in. What, do you know, would you, well, first off, do you plan to do it again? I would love to do it again. Yeah. I think it was, a, like, the first time, I think it was a great, yeah, a great thing. Do you know what you would do differently or anything? Uh, I would make sure that I had a whole room that I <laughs> okay. wasn't going to move around. Um, yeah. I would uh, I would also have just a couple little things like a camera stand to uh, have. I had a, uh, one of the HDMI to your iPhone like converters, yeah. so I had my camera filming the uh, – the tattoo while it was on a big screen behind me oh, so okay. everybody could crowd around but 15 people can't get around one person sure so uh there's like little technical stuff that i would change i would also probably uh bring in pre-mapped ideas to shrink it gotcha. i was actually drawing in front of people thumbnailing things in front of people i would probably have them set out and be like this is the first idea of the thumbnail how to sketch it out, and then so on and so on that's yeah. already saved. Yeah. It would yeah. probably cut it down by about four hours. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, some time saver. And you you get then you have the uh, uh, the luxury of, like, picking really great thumbnails. You know, yeah, like and then I look examples. better instead of, like, yeah. having to. Well, I think it's also really, really important for people to, you know, especially younger tattooers, uh, that this process takes forever. Yeah. And it never stops. Yeah. So if you don't want to put the time in to do it, then just don't worry about it. Just do something else. Yeah. Uh, for the ro like the roses from me to where they are now, from when I started being like, I want to make a weird fucking rose, to now has been about seven years. Huh. And that's like. That's doing it every day. But I can draw those motherfuckers like a sh motherfucker <laughs> now. Yeah. You know, and that's the one thing that I can comfortably draw. Yeah. No and birds too. And that I can comfortably stylize my own way. But it didn't, it's, didn't it, happen fast. No. And yeah. it shouldn't happen fast. And if it does, then that's awesome. Yeah. But I think that all the trial and error takes forever. Yeah. Yeah. And Most likely if it happens fast you, you probably stole someone else's stylized idea yeah. or you didn't explore it far enough. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and that's the cool thing, too, is, like, 
stylized stuff is st like people talk about stealing things and stuff like that. I mean, it it, it really doesn't matter. I mean, come on, you know that you're gonna do it, and like you know what you do. And if you're having a problem with people stealing stuff, then then that's cool. They shouldn't steal stuff, but yeah, yeah, stealing stuff right out from under you. Take you know, sh using your word for reference. That's that's one thing. But there are a lot of people out there that are straight up. Redoing people's custom tattoos. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. But I think that's what I was, that was the first thing in the seminar that I told everybody too. When you start this process of finding imagery and picking certain imagery that you're going to start drawing and using as your anchor point, to put your phone away. Yeah. Um, subconsciously, you will take anything cool that you see and you will put it in your tattoos mm. or artwork or anything. And put your phone away, quit looking at the internet. Uh, find artists, not tattooers. Quit referencing tattoos. Yeah. Um. F type in the kind of art that you like. Get on. Go to a museum and be like, man, that shit's crazy. And then find that artist and research it. It's all at your fingertips. It's yeah. just laziness, right. taking other people's shit. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I try to make sure whenever. Uh, clients bring reference in that they know that I don't really want tattoo reference. Mm -hmm. Like if we're gonna do a celestial scene or whatever, don't bring me a space tattoo. Like bring me some some image. There are tons of images of space. Bring me some space. What one hundred percent. What colors do you like in space? Exactly. You know. <laughs> like I think that's a really big thing. Yeah. Uh, also, in the seminar stuff, I just talked about like uh, a lot of younger tattooers. A lot of not not even a lot of younger tattooers, just a lot of tattooers in general don't understand how they can't make a change in style or make people get their tattoos that they want to do. That is because when people look for tattoos on the internet, the number one way that people are looking for stuff, do you know how many line drawings you see? Yeah. None. Yeah. No one's brought in a line drawing and been like, Can you do this line drawing? Right. Because they don't know what that's supposed to be. Start painting your tattoos. Yeah, you sh you wanna you wanna change your style. You wanna make crazy weird stuff. Show them a completely rendered image, yeah. and nine out of ten times they'll get it. Yeah, but if you it's show them nice. some line work, there's too much question in their mind. You know, that's not the way people view tattoos. Yeah, in yeah. the real world, that's the way tattooers view tattoos. Right. I can see a line work piece and be like, mm, that's gonna be a nice tattoo. Yeah. Yeah, but most people can't. That's a great point. I hadn't really thought about, but yeah, you're absolutely right. And so many of us, you know, even when we have books here at a at a convention, we just have line drawings because they're easy to just make a stencil and go. Mm -hmm. But it is hard for people to visualize it. Yeah. yeah. How many books have you seen out in the in books a million or whatever that you pick up and it's just full of line drawings? Yeah. None. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. people don't view line drawings the same way that other people. You know, there's not like a What's a good way to say it? That's not a 100% completed image. Yeah. So it could be different in everybody's eyes until it's completed. Right. Right. Yeah, that's great advice. I, I, I hadn't thought of it, but you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. um, well, so wh where your, where's your next stop from here? Due south. Oh, yeah. yeah that's, with yeah. Matt. Yeah, with Matt. Yep. Yeah, well, we really wanted to do that show. We got a conflict this year. When is that? That's March. March. We're at evergreen yeah there's another one that's yeah. the same time yeah yeah and uh we're in uh, eugene oregon with um that's uh joshua carlton's show yeah yeah that's a that that's a a good show i heard I've, yeah uh, yeah lived it's out good. that way for a while i never made it down yeah it's good this is probably their fifth or sixth year doing it and it, uh, it's a little bigger than this one but not big it's a small show this is the kind this is the this size is right here yeah 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 i didn't say at the start of this one but we're still at space city and uh, this whole series has, has been a Space City ser series, and uh, I really, I really do like it. It's it, it's a perfect size. And uh, who who were we just talking to a minute ago? Oh, the sailor Jesse made the point. I hadn't even noticed, but they don't um, do the drapes in between, yeah. So you can kind of see everybody and talk. Mm -hmm. I love that. I, I hadn't even noticed it. Yeah, that's like a big thing. The first year that they were like. They hung up and it looked like a convention, and then yeah. eventually everybody kind of started taking them down. Yeah. Everybody, it's one of those good shows that everybody knows everybody. Yeah, like uh, it's just big enough that you get to meet new people, mm -hmm. and just small enough that you get to know everybody. Right, and right. that's super cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, well let, let's wrap it up because I don't feel good. I don't either, dude. I'm. Just <laughs> Man, thank you for taking the time. Yeah, I really course, enjoyed man. it. Thanks for having me. We'll it's see. You. I'm cool. sure we'll, 
cross paths soon. Thank you guys yeah. um, for supporting what we do, as always. If you want to follow Ulyss, if you don't already, it's under is it Ulyss underscore Blair? Yeah. yeah, on Instagram or uh, Allegory, Allegory Ar Arts. Allegory Arts. And you guys are in Fl Florence, Florence, Alabama. Alabama. I've, I've got a good in memory. In the middle of nowhere. Last year. In the middle of nowhere. I, you know, I've, I've remembered Florence, Alabama since you told me that last year because literally like a month later, I tattooed someone from Florence, Alabama. I was it's just weird like, how no it kidding. Out. Yeah, like I just did a podcast with someone from Florence. <laughs> so, so now it's in my head. I remember. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys.